Stand here. By. Stand by. You know? yeah. An unmarried woman, certainly the title itself tells us a great deal about the film. But Paul, you are the producer, the director, the writer of An Unmarried Woman. And as I sat there and viewed your film, I kept thinking, where is this man coming from that he has so much insight and so much perception about women, and particularly women in that situation? Well, thank you for the compliment. I have never been uh, afraid of, of, let's say, my feminine side. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a heterosexual and all of that. But I mean, I've, I've never, I've always felt comfortable with women comfortable talking to women, comfortable being with my wife's friends, a comfortable, I kind of enjoyed it, I don't know. And I'm for 20 years, I've been married 25 years, we've had women coming to the house and talking, and my wife talking to them, and well, it's not like, exactly like the movie. A lot of them have found themselves no longer married. Uh, some left their husbands, some had their husbands leave them, but I've heard a lot of women talking. I interviewed women. I asked my wife to read the script. Uh, I asked Jill for her comments. I've asked women to share in the experience a lot. And uh, it's in a strange way that, that kind of active imagination is easier sometimes than writing about something close to yourself, writing about me, let's say, or a man just like me. Because being able to imagine it gave me a chance to uh, sort of check it with research where you can't check yourself. You know. Jill, was there anything in the script when you first read it that you made either a mental note or actually wrote a little note to yourself saying, I've got to tell Paul this, she wouldn't really do this or she wouldn't really feel, feel yeah. or react. Yeah. What, what, give me a, a for instance. Well, there was a scene where uh, Martin tells me that he's leaving and there was, a, a, my character said a lot more than she does now. And I, f I felt that in that position, I would be much more unable to speak than he had had the character written in that scene. That's an example. I know, so it's I a wonderful example. that he cut it, and then he cut it. Because he, he agreed with me. If he had, I, I suggested also hundreds of things that he didn't agree with. Well, and, but he was very... I don't open. know if this is interesting to you, if you, excuse me, interesting to your viewers. You, when you write a first draft, you overwrite a little bit. Uh, out of you want you want to be so sure that the people who read it understand it. But what, when Jill said to me, I, I don't think I could say all that, and uh, it was a wonderful realization for me that she was right. And the look on her face when he tells her is worth 25 pages of dialogue. I don't know if you're, you remember that look, but yes, she's, got, I do. she's got a look. They're that, on the street, and right, he and tells I cut, her. We cut to her. And she's she's got. A, certain kind of look, it's, it's, it's ten pages of dialogue, just out, you don't need it. She Paul, was very helpful, really, really was. Paul, you say you've been married 25 years? In March, it? yeah. Okay. March 14th, I haven't made it yet. <laughs> I don't know when this shows, but. Um, do you consider that you have what is, quote, a good marriage? Yes, I do. I think it's very good. I think we've had a, you know, a couple of periods of uh, anguish. But it's been amazingly easy. I don't know why. What, what is a good marriage? Good marriage is where two people uh, really like each other and are good friends. I mean, why, why else be with somebody mm -hmm. if you're not good friends? We're very good friends. We respect each other. And we don't do all the same things. I'm, I play tennis. I could play tennis probably all day for the rest of my life. My wife has other interests. I travel sometimes alone. She doesn't always go with me. She does things that I don't do. She's a sort of a part-time social worker. But we, uh, I think we genuinely like to be with each other, feel warm with each other, you know, comfortable. Jill, in the script, there is a scene you have with your daughter. And you say to her, uh, even though you and your husband are divorced or getting a divorce, you say, but there are lots of good marriages. And your daughter says, name, name, one. name one, and you don't respond. Mm -hmm. Do you personally feel that way? In other words, would Jill Clayburgh have to just stop and take a beat and not be able to answer that? 
I know uh, one good marriage, and I don't know Paul and Betsy that well. But I'd have to look at it a little more closely, but it looks like a very good marriage. I would you say know. I know two good marriages. You are not married. So um, do you think that there could come a time in your life when you would marry, or do you think, like a lot of young people today, that why bother because there are so few good and successful marriages? Why bother? Do you feel that way? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I sort of do. You're afraid of marriage, in other words? No, I'm not afraid of it. I don't see the point if you don't have children at this point in, in society, the way things are. I don't. I, I would definitely get married if I decided to have children. Not because I think marriage is any great thing, but because I don't think the society is ready for people having illegitimate children. I think they would be harmful to the children. I think that the, I, I sort of know what you're getting at, I'm guessing. Uh, and I know o over the years I've met a lot of people who've had good marriages. But over the years... Most of them have fallen apart. So many of them have fallen <laughs> apart that I'm, I'm staggered. Yeah, I don't Quite frankly, I don't you know, I, 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 go, I leave, I go to a city and I come back eight years later and I met some people and I had dinner with them. Mm. I didn't get to know them that well, but they seemed very happy. And, and I say, how's your wife? And oh, well, that... I cool. don't say, I think for some people marriage is wonderful. I think it's a very, I don't have a thing against marriage in general. I think it's no, fine I don't and either. wonderful. But the sort of... I'm very independent. I have my own money. I, I, there's nothing that marriage, per se, can give me. If, if, Paul, you were going to have a sequel to this, where, where would Erica's Erica life... comes to Dallas, rides in the rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that, well, I think that Erica, if I had a sequel about Erica, and I, I'm not prepared to do it yet, my, I don't know yet, but I, I have a feeling that a couple of things will happen to her. I think she'll probably leave that gallery. I don't think she's going to work there forever. I think she's going to somehow get more independent. I think she's going to... Where would she work? I don't know. I don't know yet. Think, I, I just know Maybe she'd open her own gallery. She might do that. I don't know. You maybe, know, that would be a good maybe, thing sure, for her. Sure, Something sure. really... She might, she might get a small place and struggle more but it'd be her own yeah uh i think she'll see alan bates again i don't know if it'll be forever i think uh would she go back to martin ever oh no 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 she'd be on that I would don't she think marry so. would she marry i think so i think she would I like to get married surprised. in the future i think the biggest conflict for her that would be coming up would be the actual real moment when her daughter would go to college Mm, that's and then she'd be really painful. be alone. She's, she's got a holiday oh, for a yeah. couple of years. It's really difficult. I have two children. My oldest daughter is in college now. And my youngest is going to be 13 soon. And, you know, I'm crazy about kids. And I know that as much as I might complain about problems with kids, when she goes to college and I'm, we're really just the mm. two of us, that's going to be interesting. And imagine if it was I'm just the one of you. Uh, yeah, I'm a little, it's a little... Nervous, because you, know, you get so much pleasure. Oh, out poor of it. Erica! I don't even like to think of it. <laughs> no, she's tricky. gonna. Maybe she'll have another child. Um, I doubt it. I doubt it. I don't think so. Uh, that's interesting. I don't think so. Maybe but, she'll have eight children. Right. <laughs> we have a television series. Right, Paul. I don't know. There are some critics who are saying that this is a high-budget soap opera. Now, what what do you have? Really, to I say haven't read that. To the critics who are talking along those lines. I, I haven't heard that from anybody. Well, I have, and, and so, you know, if somebody said to you, Mr. Mazursky, I, Mazursky. you know, it's, it's, excuse me, Mazursky, Mr. Mazursky, it's, um... I wouldn't try to defend it. Oh. I have no, I would never just, I never argue with a critic. Uh, I never try to influence a critic. I never try to, once someone makes a statement, They've, they've come from some position that if you completely disagree, it's just sort of absurd. It's opinion. absurd to argue with it. It's not a high budget, though. Yeah, I was going to say it should have been a higher that's, budget. That's so the first Barbara. problem. <laughs> you know, it didn't cost a lot of money compared to some of the pictures that have been made. I think there have been some high budget soap operas about women, but I don't think this is one of them. I thank you both very thank much you. for coming to Dallas and for giving us this opportunity to talk with both of you. Thank you. 
So who called it a high budget soap opera? Oh, oh just Bobby, you some people did. Oh, I've seen it. Oh, not critics, know. not in the paper. Oh no, not in the paper. No, oh, no, wow. I haven't read anything like that. You want some cutaway shots? Ah, uh, yes, please. Okay. He made it sound like that was written in a criticism. Ah. Uh, well, if it's if it really if they really uh, meant it, probably. Where do you want me to look? Kind of like here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, she made it sound like they were critics in a paper rather than friends or oh, people. I see, yeah. Which, if it's in the paper, that's fine, but I don't like that implication. Yeah. What's turning point? 